In the life of Jesus, we can observe that he often responded to questions and parables. And many examples of this can be found in the book of Matthew. Jesus used parables to answer those who challenged him with a question. When Jesus spent his final week in Jerusalem, some of the religious rulers there challenged his authority. If you would please turn with me to Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through 24. Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through 24. And when he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The authority of Jesus, as we read in this passage, was challenged by the priests and elders. In response to these questions, he told them three parables. The parable of the two sons, Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. The parable of the wicked vine dressers, which is found in Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. And the parable of the wedding feast. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the parable of the two sons. Please turn with me to Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went into the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he changed his mind and went. And then he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. The parable itself is fairly simple and easy to understand. This parable tells us of a man who has two sons. The father tells his first son to go and work in the vineyard. He said he wouldn't go, but then later that day regretted it and went. The second son said he would go, but then after didn't go. Jesus begins to explain the parable to them, starting in Matthew chapter 21, verse 31. He begins with a simple question. Which of the two sons did the will of his father? And they answered him, saying the first. Uh, please turn, let's read Matthew chapter 21, verses 31 and 32. Matthew chapter 21, verses 31 and 32. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. Jesus applied the parable to the religious leaders of his day. They were like the first son who said he would, wouldn't go, but would go but didn't. But the sinners and the tax collectors who repented were like the first son who said he wouldn't go but did. What can we learn from this parable? The main point of this parable is that we must be people who do and not just say. Jesus stated this truth on several occasions. Please turn with me to Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. It reads, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? But then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. The lesson that is taught in this verse is one that's really needed today. The world has created a generation of people who say but don't actually do. Some people say Jesus is Lord, but they don't do what he says. Those who do that are like the second son. We must do what he says and keep his commandments. Keeping the commandments of God is essential to our salvation. If you would please turn with me to 1 John chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. 1 John chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. 
He is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Keeping God's commandments by itself does not mean we will earn salvation. We must keep his commandments along with other things to earn salvation. To end this lesson, I'm going to ask you a question. Which son are you? Are you the first son who does the will of the Father, or the second son who says they will but don't?